Everyone wants to make a connection with a prospect when they do an outreach. We also want to make sure we can do this at scale. Now, I know that there's some people out there just doing a bunch of automation that is, it's not genuinely personalized and that could cause issue. On this episode, we're going to talk about how you can still have some elements of personalization at scale that works without spamming in 2024. Check it out. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald C. Kelly, the Sales Evangelist. And I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. On this episode, we're going to connect with my good friend, Vlad. And Vlad and I got, we, we got a chance to chat about this whole emailing at scale concept. He works with organizations just like you and me, sales professionals who are trying to figure this thing out. And to look at how we can email at scale while we're while not being a spammer or not being disingenuous with our prospect, he's going to break down some of the strategies that works for him, for his clients, and that you can adopt very simply. If this is your first time listening to our show, it's designed to help you to three to five X your sales pipeline and to help you to double your close rate. We want to make sure you're focusing on the right deals and helping you to be able to do that more effectively. Now, as we dive in, you'll get a chance to hear a little bit about his backstory and how he got started, why he's so passionate about emailing, and how you can adopt the principles and do it at scale. Check it out. Vlad, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me today, Donald. How are you? Doing fantastic, man. I look forward to this conversation and to be able to pick your brain. Um, specifically right now, the game has changed a little bit when it comes to cold emailing in 2024 and 20, you know, and beyond. And I'm sure it will adjust again next year specifically cold emailing at scale. Uh, all of us as sales rep, we do have our focus accounts and we do want to do outreach, but how do we make sure we can scale this? But before we dive into that part, would you be willing to take a few minutes and tell us a little bit more about what you do? Sure. Um, yeah, again, my name is Vlad and I'm, I'm I would say, gross leader here at Reply with SDR's background. Um, I have spent, I guess, seven years SDRing uh, meaning things like lead generation, list building, prospecting, cold emails, outbounds, all those things. And I was managing the SDR team here at Reply. So yeah, I spent a lot of time uh, specifically on cold outreach um, and like specifically and more specifically here, cold outreach at scale. Mm. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts on this then. When it goes to the problem right now with cold outreach, some of the things that we see is that your prospects are getting tired of a lot of emails, um, mm -hmm. the inbox. And I think we all can agree on that inbox of the way we look at our inbox is, is evolving a little bit um, Two, sometimes we're using AI and AI mm -hmm. don't necessarily give the best emails. <laughs> Um, and three buyers want to know that, you know, them, we have those against us. And then to put a backdrop on it, we'll talk about this towards the end of the episode. You have Google and Yahoo who are mm -hmm. really validating the first three where buyers are changing the way they use their inbox and don't want to just AI stuff and the, you know, want to feel personalized. So they're validating that and they're pushing some parameters in place with all of those problems, <laughs> man, like cold email is hard <laughs> yeah. at, at scale is harder. Talk to me about what are you seeing when it comes towards those issues? Just that, you mm. know, just overall the problem you're seeing with sales reps and doing cold email at scales with some of those things that I just mentioned. Yeah, sure. Well, um, it always uh, also, uh, I would say it's super important to, to have like a uh, context here because cold outreach definitely depends on, uh, on, uh, on your market and mm -hmm. the company you work with, because pretty much there are like a few types of cold outreach, I would say, like high volume, low touch, cold email set scale, and it's it's gonna work primarily for for SMBs, probably mid market companies, probably with no SDRs, so they have just some some salespeople or I would say lead generators or gross hackers who can set up everything on their own. So there is no need to have SDRs. And on the other side of the spectrum, we have like enterprise SDRs. So in this case, probably they 
they have limited number of accounts, they have their territories, they have their like uh, verticals, industries, and so on. So probably they don't reach out to like hundreds and hundreds um, of, of prospect every month. So it's super important to know that. So when it comes to probably it's super, this one is super important probably for issue, probably for SMB and maybe mid-market um, salespeople, sales teams who rely on high volume cold outreach because again, it's because of the average contract value. So they have, they, they can close like super huge deals. So they need to reach out to more prospects and work with more accounts. Um, so yeah, uh, I, yeah, I agree that, that um, with the rise with the eye on all the things, uh, outreach is getting harder and, but what, what, what I've noticed on the other, on the other hand, that it, that like cold outreach and outbound specifically is still an effective channel, probably still one of the most effective channels, uh, to generate new revenue and to keep your company, uh, growing. Um, and again, it definitely changed yeah. since, I guess, 20, 2010s, I guess. Uh, and primarily, uh, again, it's all, be, all, all because the volume of emails we sent to the prospects. So they are more uh, educated. So they skip some emails, some like, uh, C level, VP level employees. They already, they already, when they see something like quick question, some of them are skipping those emails, for example, because they know that's going to be a sales pitch or something. Yeah. Um, see, so it's again, it's all about education, but what I've noticed so far that we as salespeople or gross people and need to focus on this thing called relevancy at scale. Come on. And that's how, Come on. yeah. And that's, and that's how we can actually like scale our cold outreach. Why? Because, um, when you send your cold emails, when it's a perfect time, but again, it's super hard to, to, to be like relevant at scale, but mm -hmm how we can do that, we can implement intent based cold outreach. So there are a bunch of tools that allow you to listen to specific signals to specific triggers that identify that account or prospect is going to purchase something or is going to 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 like explore a solution in your niche. For example, it's going to be something like Hiring, they're hiring salespeople means probably they need a tool or services for, for, for like maybe for cold outreach or they need some sales server services, etc. Maybe when they change jobs. So yeah. we can, we can listen to those signals. We can, it, so instead of focusing on like a list of accounts, we can focus on a list of accounts with a specific signal. And then we can use this signal as a reason for outreach at scale. So there is no need to fake our emails basically. That's good. Yeah. So that's the concept here. <laughs> so the, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of relevancy. I'm glad you got, you said that it was a couple of year, about a year ago, I started really pushing that because I, I just seen it. Like looking at my inbox, like I look at emails that come in and I'm like, this is not relevant to me or it's not relevant to where I'm at in my business. And and no, I don't expect somebody to be a psychic, but I do expect someone to really understand where I'm coming from. But to do that times, I mean, you, you go back to the idea of, you know, you're doing a high touch at, uh, uh, you know, a, a small number of focus uh, accounts. And if you're yes, SM, you know, SMB and you're doing a, you know, high volume at a, you know, at a smaller touch, like, you know, fewer touches, there's, I need, I get it that it's hard to do that, but I still need the quality. I still need you to be able to give that to mm -hmm. me. And this is a great combination of doing that. So why don't you go back? We talked about the intent based um, cold email. Are there any tools mm -hmm. that can help us to be able to identify? I mean, like I, I use a navigator, which helped me find out people who are new to the role, job changes, and, you know, uh, if they're hiring and things of that mm -hmm. nature. Are there any other tools that can help a sales rep in their identify intent um, early on that you recommend? 
Um, yeah, for sure. So basically intent, intent based, uh, that I, I agree with you. This, this specifically this, like, uh, I would say, um, whole idea of intent based outreach is not new one, but in the no. last like two years, I guess mm -hmm. it started like crystallizing and lots of sales influencers started talking about like, uh, intent based outreach. And now they started building products on top of uh, those uh, concepts and now we have i would say probably maybe up to 10 software categories that allows yeah. you to like uh, to, to like to listen to those different types of uh intent signals so for me i would say that again sales navigator there are a bunch of feel filters i agree with you probably this one of is the easiest one so job changers new roles um, department growth spikes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they are visiting your profile. For example, it's, it can be combined with your social selling. For example, if you, mm -hmm. if you're, and if you're an active on LinkedIn, for example, uh, hiring data. So again, you can use sales navigator for that, for that, or just LinkedIn and their job posting, but there are a bunch of tools so you can, you can specify, okay, so show me a list of accounts that are looking for that are hiring for a specific role, for example, yeah. SDRs. Um, so they're expanding their sales, sales team. Um, what else? Um, social listening, for example, you can listen for specific keywords on social media. For example, when someone says uh, something like, what CRM would you recommend? So you can listen to these, to those, to those, uh, signals on, let's say Reddit or Twitter, um, communities. And then this software can send you a list of prospects, uh, like if just a feed of prospect, um, who are looking for a CRM, for example. So you can just, uh, build, um, like, an agent that will just will mine internet for you looking for specific keywords or phrases, for example, what else? Um, that could be something like technographics. Again, uh, an old concept out there, uh, technographics, technographics changes. Um, they are increasing their budget on marketing and ads. So, so every it's, so those signals will be unique for your services, for your yeah. products. And yeah, so you need to figure out some, some of things. My favorite ones, by the way, are hiring signal, job changers, and champions. So, probably, yeah. so hiring champions. signals, job change, champion. We'll go deeper into the champion one. Uh, here's how it works. Uh, you can build uh, a list in Sales Navigator, so you mm -hmm. can add Every time when someone subscribes for your product or your service, so you can add them to your, uh, to sales navigator list. You can build a custom sales navigator list, add them to your, to that list. And when they change a company, you will be notified about it and they can, you can reach out to them once again and ask, Hey, I noticed that like, you used our product. Let's, let's, um, let's chat again. Yeah. Uh, Pretty hard, probably pretty hard to implement uh, if you have no uh, your prospects on LinkedIn. So it's also yeah. an option there. So some of our accounts, they, they are like small SMBs. So they don't have, for example, LinkedIn. So it's, uh, uh, so we all live in our uh, like information bub bub bubble thinking that everyone is on, <laughs> us, on LinkedIn, but in reality, it's not true. Yeah, unfortunately, I know. I, I get to that point too. I'm like, I'm like, seriously, you're not on LinkedIn? And it's like, bro, yeah. I'm a painter. I paint houses. <laughs> it's like, it's like, what's wrong yeah. with you? <laughs> um, so, come back to this idea, though. We we just spoke about, uh, you know, the the concept of um, we're scaling our we're, we're uh, intent based uh, cold outreach. We're mm -hmm. looking for intent signal. We're looking at champions. We're looking at mm -hmm. job changes. We're looking at uh, department growth, uh, just relevant information from folks. Now, after I do that, how do I go about making my email to 
what what mm -hmm. does that email look like? Is there an email outline you see that works best? You've done this as a BDR. You work in an organization where you see this. I'm trying to do it at scale. How do I not sound like a, a robot? Oh, that's a great question. So it depends again. It's a great question. And so I think uh, it's all about experimentation and, and try your own things. But how, here's how I do this. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so again, we use this intent based outreach a lot of times. Um, and what we do with those intents. So we actually create separate sequences for every like intent. And then we use um just just sentences about this intent in in our cold email for example mm -hmm. we can use it as a reason for outreach for example so there is no need to have like an evergreen or or um like or generic sequence so you can just create a separate sequence or campaign in your cold outreach software or sequencing tool um, for example, for hiring intent, and then yeah. you can you can just personalize it with no variables, pretty much. So you can, and then I start my emails with a reason for outreach. So I'm actually What's the specifying subject what, what, what subject line might look like. Oh, subject line! I'm not overcomplicating it. it. For me, it's just company, their company names, their curly brackets, and reply.io. So uh, this one works awesome for me. Almost. Uh, Almost always, I would say typically 60 to 70% wow. open rate for, for like two follow ups, including like bump follow ups. But yeah, it's huge. And then the first sentence uh, for my email is a reason for outreach. Hey, I noticed that company is hiring, for example, and I'm specifying yeah. five SDRs or lots of SDRs and E's. So, and then I use it as a segue for for an assumption, and it and then I say something like, and I assume that probably you're looking for a software for them, like for a cold outreach software. So because you, when you have SDRs, you need yeah. something for them, and then we after that we assume that probably they need a tool, and then of course value proposition and soft city. So that's gonna be a framework here is like this. Reason for my outreach is that and specify intent and play around with it. For example, I noticed like uh, you recently joined company as a VP of sales development. Congrats. Yeah. Uh, and I assume as a newcomer, you want to like improve sales team. Um, the reason I ask because we already help other VPs of sales and then where's the chat? So, so that's why there is no need um, it's not overcomplicated. Yeah, or it's not overcomplicated. There is no need to like uh, Be because mm -hmm. it goes back to the challenge, right? Like I have a I have a relevant challenge for you. If I'm trying to I don't know plant flowers in my garden, <laughs> and mm -hmm. you come along and you say, Donald, I see you're trying to plant dand. Sorry, I'm trying to plant dandelions or not dandelions, dandelions <laughs> weeds. Trying to plant tulips <laughs> in my garden. And you yeah. see me planting tulips in my garden. You can then offer specific information about tulips. It doesn't matter how eloquent the email is. The Donald, I see that you're planting some tulips. Most mm -hmm. times, when people are planting tulips, they don't. You know, they they come across these challenges. Could I give you some? Can I share some more stuff with you? Could I help you with that? And and that's kind of like what I'm getting. I'm I'm over I'm make, oversimplifying it. But essentially, you see a problem and you're telling yeah. me about it. And for me as a buyer, it's highly relevant. I don't care how eloquent it is or how, you know, how many stanzas you have in your email or sentences. It's the fact that it's relevant and you clearly outlined that you saw, you know what I'm doing and you can give me feedback or help with that because you've done it before. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. That's, that's, that's the whole idea. So, um, and that's actually a good, so the, the whole idea here that like you just target, uh, accounts and prospects who, who probably are switching into a buying mode. It yeah. doesn't mean they are in a buying mode, basically, but it just increases your chances to get replies. Like yeah. Probably two to three X more replies. I love it. Um, so now that I'm doing that, what's a sequence might look like? How many steps would you put in a sequence mm. then uh, if I'm trying to do this? Because again, we're all the whole point is do it at scale. So I'm building my looking at for intent, yeah. building a list. 
um, checking it twice. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then uh, I'm doing my emails. What, how many steps that you're seeing right now that makes that um, make it effective? Mm -hmm. And do I need to have personalization at each of the different sequences iteration? Yeah, that's, that's great. That's a great question. Again, it depends uh, for probably for, oh, wow, for enterprise SDRs. Uh, again, I have no experience here. Probably that's going to be 15 to 20 step sequence, including yeah. emails, LinkedIn touches. For SMBs, um, typically just probably three to four steps because uh, you need to, to scale it. And again, because of those new policies and like spam deliverability, we need to decrease number of follow-ups. And again, data says that uh, in reality, like everything after step number five, six, isn't that effective. It can just yeah. increase like negativity about your brand, your personality. So probably the sequence would be three to five steps across 20 to 30 days. Um, so step one is day one, step two going to be day four, step three will be probably um, day 14, then day 20, and then maybe something day 30. So five follow-up max. Uh, yeah, for me, it's five follow-ups. And then um, I use like, I, will, I call it conditional personalization based mm. on their persona and their industry. So then we can be a little bit personalized based on the vertical. For example, hey, we have already helped companies in tech space like customer one and customer two. So probably you need a solution as well. Um, so additional follow-ups shouldn't be super personalized. Yeah. Um, they can be simple follow-ups basically here. And you can play around, um, send emails like written by industry, vertical, whatever you prefer. Send useful content. It's all, It's also a good idea here. I'll just send something useful. Especially if it's time back to a relevant issue. Again, if I'm hiring, maybe not say, hey, here's a blog, but, you know, give me specific, uh, you know, mm -hmm. one of the things that I told you in my first, you know, mentioned that people, you know, people have challenges when it comes to hiring is just really vetting yeah. the right candidate, hiring somebody, and then they don't show up as a good candidate next week. Yeah. We have three, uh, three practices that we've seen over 5,000 companies hear what they are. I don't know, I'm, I'm making this up, but. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's a great idea. That's, uh, that's how it works. Yeah. And yeah. It, it uh, just awesome, makes. Yeah. It makes me more excited for it. I know we're coming up to the end here. Um, mm -hmm. It. I want to talk about the Google and Yahoo changes. A lot of people are still spooked about that. Um, mm -hmm. And you, you, you iterated a little bit to it, or uh, you sure. spoke on it just a little bit. Tell us what exactly it, it is in like a minute or so, and then what we can do to ensure that we stay out of Google and Yahoo jail. Yeah, that's a great question. And in reality, lots of people and companies overcomplicated it because uh, Google just 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 did this this announcement. Probably they didn't realize that lots of people rely on a cold <laughs> outbound. So yeah, they didn't realize this, I guess. And then they did this pushback uh, in terms of explanation. So that was like a, a drama there, basically. So the idea here is that Google said, okay, starting from February first this year, we we will, that's what they wanted to do. We will protect Gmail users like in, in our ecosystem. So, and they said, okay, so if you send more than 5,000 emails per day to Gmail users every day, we will watch you basically. That's what they said. So we will watch you in terms of spam, what you send them and stuff like that. So, so the whole idea was there just to protect your private Gmail, uh, Gmail accounts. Yeah. And, and it has, it had nothing to, to like workspace accounts. Gotcha. As, yeah. So we overcomplicated it and then we started sending, so creating those content on LinkedIn and then they, they, exp and Google explained it, uh, more precisely. So, so basically if you send more than 5,000 emails per day to Gmail, personal email addresses, Google will like mark you and they will, they will, uh, look 
at what you're doing, like more precisely. Yeah. And then they want you, if you do this, they want you to, 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 to check your spam scores and, and mm. your spam limit should be 0.3%. Uh, that's going to be your spam limit. If you uh, over reach this limit, they, they will just probably ban you or something, but wow. it doesn't work in reality. So again, if you have like a, a long story of your dom domain, just, just reaching this limit once, wouldn't harm your basically your brand or uh, or your reputation actually but again you need to to be like you should like should should um, check your spam limit and just gotcha. keep working on improving it and basically so the idea here is don't provoke people to complain about spam so here's how it works if you send 10 follow-ups probably this will provoke to click spam report <laughs> spam because uh, you're annoying people yeah. so if you use opt-out text in your cold emails instead of opt-out link it makes harder to unsubscribe for your cold emails so they will click spam report spam so nowadays they're gently saying okay use opt-out links instead of opt-out text be relevant basically if you reach out yeah. to just just sending cold emails at scale to non icp prospects uh, why would they matter they will just click yeah. report spam yeah this so is garbage i don't need this yeah i don't need this why are you reaching out to me it's not not area of my responsibilities for example and yeah. so yeah so basically don't over complicate it um and everything will be i guess fine uh, and use a tool called postmasters it's just google's native tool and you can monitor your spam, spam rates, spam, li spam limits. Of, again, it's about deliverability. It's about like uh, all those technical stuff like SPF, DKIM, DMARC. So you need to properly set up your domains for cold outreach. Probably avoid using your main domain for, for outbound ad scale. Again, you can use it for probably um, leads who know about your brand for example ghosting opportunities in your yeah. crm or like uh, uh, bridge bound or like whatever they call it like for leads in your crm basically so they yeah. know about your brand and probably there is a lower chance they will complain about spam i love it this Super was simple. great <laughs> if people want to get in touch with you to connect with you further what's the best way for them to go about doing so um, I think it's LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn, you can find me as Vlad, uh, Alexienko at reply.io on LinkedIn, or it's email Vlad at reply.io. All right. So like that. Yeah. We'll put those in our show notes so folks can get access to them. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show today, Vlad. Appreciate you. Yep. Thank you for having me today. Super excited to be there. Anytime. That was my good friend, Vlad. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and connect with him on LinkedIn. Check out some of the cool things they're offering and especially the principles that he shared today. None of the things that he shared is going to work for you unless you work. And the idea here is not to overcomplicate it. Keep it simple. Don't try to do everything all at once, but take what you learn. Take one of these ideas, apply it, and then you start you know, you start your, your, your A-B testing, so to speak, and to see different iterations. But the concept of how you can scale right now with emails, not being a spammer, there's still a possibility of how you can do that. Now, we don't tell you to only go on one platform. Make sure you're taking advantage of LinkedIn. Make sure you're taking advantage of, obviously, the phone. And if you want to learn more about how you can use LinkedIn or need some motivation, some coaching, some to be some some ways to be held accountable, check out our LinkedIn prospecting course or our sales mastermind. You can find details of both of them in the show notes. As always, I want you to thrive. I want you to succeed. I want you to raise your level of thinking. I want you to go out and do big things. See you on the next one.